What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and you are watching the part two of the salmon catch and cook. Today we're actually for part two we're doing catch and sushi. So we're doing the sushi portion of this uh, of this catch. If you haven't seen part one of this video where I caught the salmon make sure to go check that out. It was pretty epic. It took me a very long time. I had to work hard for this one. So go check it out. After I caught the salmon, I decided to take it to Hinata. That's the restaurant I used to work at when I was a sushi chef before I became a full-time YouTuber. I'm gonna show you how to fillet the salmon and how to prepare it for sushi, how to, I'm gonna do a salt cure, we're gonna freeze it, and we're gonna talk about all of that, the safety behind salmon sushi. So I've already scaled it and gutted it. And remember, there's a, a ton of ways to fillet a salmon. Many people do it differently, but I'm gonna show you guys the way I fillet the salmon. Wow, oh. that is clean. Yeah, that is beautiful. I start on the left side on the back, like I do with most fish, actually. So this is the center right here, right? I'm gonna just go right above that, at a 45 degree angle, and make my first cut all the way down the entire fish. There you go. Just cutting the skin of the fish. Yeah. Wipe my knife a little. Now, instead of a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna make it flat, parallel with the board. And I'm gonna go all the way in, down to the spine. Oh man, I haven't played a salmon in a while. Kind of nervous. <laughs> all right. Now that I got it all the way down. Now I'm gonna hit the spine again and just... Now what I do is instead of flipping the fish like I normally do, I start on the heel of the knife right here. I'm gonna just start to go down the spine here, cutting. I'm gonna make a little hole there just for my finger, just so it's easier to hold. And there you go. That's the filet. That's the one filet right there. The way I do the other side, instead of flipping it over, I'm gonna take, actually go right under the spine. You see that's the spine right there. And I'm gonna insert my knife right under that. All right? I'm gonna take off about two inches through the whole entire fish, the whole entire spine here. All right, so that's gonna look like this. You wanna keep the pressure sort of upward on the spine. And you see I'm keeping that kind of two inch margin there. Uh, it's gonna have a lot of meat left on here on the spine. And yeah, that's uh, completely fine right there. We'll save the bones for something else. I'm actually going to make the hole again here. Just for it's easier to control. Now you might be thinking like, oh, that doesn't look very nice right here. You know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this whole section. It's right where that starts. You can see your knife. And just gently, I'm going to take a thin layer off. You don't have to do the whole thing at once. Now you can hold the skin here and you're just gonna run your knife and pull the skin. Pull this my left hand at the same time. Or you're pulling the skin lightly and running the knife at the same time. So you get this nice clean cut. And this is all scrap too that we can use for something else. Now I'm gonna flip it on, on a salmon. When you do it like this, you sh actually shouldn't feel any resistance. So it should just go very smoothly and just like that. Just gonna work the knife, work the knife, and just take that rib cage off. It's kind of fat lining there. I prefer to take the, all that off too. Some people will leave it on, but I looks much cleaner if you take it off. Now, I'm gonna do the same exact thing I did with the other side, but this side has the fin. So I'm gonna go around the fin and then 
just right down to the tail. Just like that. See that? Now we should have this beautiful belly meat here. The most fatty portion of the salmon right there. This is gonna be tasty. There's one more step to filleting the salmon, and that's the pin bones. It's actually gonna start all the way up here, not just at the top, right here in the front. Don't forget these ones. And the fresher the salmon, the more difficult it is gonna be to take out the pin bones. Seen on TV how fast they go, boom, 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 boom. But with the fresh salmon, it's not gonna be like that. The meat is very firm and it holds the pinballs in very well, so. But these are, you see how long the pin bones are, right? Look at that, about two and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna salt cure this fish. Just gonna, uh, we're gonna do a salt cure for about an hour and a half. So with a fresh salmon like this, uh, it's not as necessary to do a salt cure. I would say it's optional, but if you get it from a market or something, uh, something like that, where it's not as fresh as this fresh caught one, uh, you could do this. You can do a salt cure, and it'll make it much better. It'll firm the meat, and it'll taste better as well. Helpful for making your salmon sushi taste much, much better. Just take uh, some salt. This is just uh, some kosher salt. Sprinkle, sprinkle some on a. You could be a uh, sheet pan or. If you just have a small piece, it could be on a plate, just like that. And I'm gonna put the skin side down, just like so. This is what we do in sushi very often. And it should be about like this. It should be even in about a medium amount of salt. So how you wanna do is keep the salt high and shake it back and forth evenly, evenly coating the fish. Now I'm just gonna leave this in the fridge for an hour and a half, all right? And we'll come back to it and we'll portion it off for sushi. All right, all right now it's been an hour and a half and check out this salmon. You can see some of that moisture has come out of the fish and now it's, we're not gonna wash it. We're just gonna pat dry with a paper towel, okay? okay. We're just gonna keep the skin on. And we're, yeah, we're gonna portion it for sushi just like that. First, I'm gonna take the belly off. There you go. So you got that belly piece. This is gonna be delicious. This is all Jocelyn Nigiri right here. So the way I portion it is gonna be three sections right here. One, two, three. Yeah, right there. And that's it. So these are the portions that you should have from a salmon when you're making sushi. Now we're just gonna wrap it up and we're gonna put it in the deep freezer. And the reason I did this here is because they have a deep freezer here that it can reach the, the temperature it needs for it to freeze and kill the parasites. And you want to wrap this up tightly so there's no, there's no uh, air in there. And another option would be to vacuum seal it. But you can get it done with a plastic wrap just like that. According to the FDA, you have to freeze the fish in order to kill the parasites. And the temperature you need to freeze it to is a negative 35 degrees Celsius. Um, for 24 hours or at negative 15 degrees Celsius for seven days. According to the FDA, that is a standard to kill off any potential parasites in a fish. You might be saying, Taku, you've eaten other fish that potentially have parasites without freezing them, like halibut, striped bass, or even surf perch. I mean, all three of those things uh, without freezing them. So what's the difference between salmon and all three of those? Well, the main difference is the color of the flesh. All those are white fish. Salmon is very, has a deep orange color. The white fish, it's very translucent and you can see the parasites that are in there. 
uh, whereas the salmon, you can't see through the flesh, you can't hold it up to a light and see, the, look for parasites. So that is the major difference, that you can't see the parasites, whereas in whitefish, you would be able to see the parasites because they are more translucent. Now that the salmon had been frozen for over 24 hours and it's defrosted now, we're gonna make the sushi, all right? My guess, our usual spots that we go to to film to cook, it is blowing hard. So we had to come here, uh, compromise a little, but I'm sorry about the, the cars that you're hearing. It's the highway that's right here, so apologize for that. At least there's no wind and we can get this done. Nice fat scallion, this is called Tokyo Negi. Let me show you a little cool trick with the cucumber. So I cut just a little end off. I'm gonna cut into the cucumber at an angle, just a slight angle, turn it. Me back with the other one, just like that. And you can twist it, pop it off, put it down on the cutting board. For presentation, whatever you want to put in there. You want to put ginger in there, wasabi in there, a little cucumber cup, all right? But I'm going to put some sashimi in there. You'll see in a bit. And then we'll do a little katsuramuki. So that's my salmon, all defrosted. First, I'll do a little pat dry. Perfect, it has a skin on still, so I'm gonna take that off first. But salmon always has that dark portion right next to the skin. So I'm just gonna go right above that dark part. Just like that. So you have this beautiful, beautiful piece there. And, but don't worry, you may think, oh man, you left a lot of meat on here. Yeah, I did but that's on purpose too. What you can do is you get, I'm gonna take some of this meat off still. And that right there can be used for a, for a roll. And I'll show you how. So now you see it's kinda has that dark portion on it. And it's edible, it's fine, you can totally eat it. I don't want it to affect the flavor of the sashimi, so. For a roll, I don't really mind. I'll just eat that. And the rest of it, this is mostly just skin. It has a little tiny bit of meat on there, but that's okay. I'm gonna dehydrate this, and we're gonna do something with the skin as well. And now we're gonna cut this for sashimi. It should be about a quarter inch thick. Yeah, right about a quarter inch thick. And I'm using my heel of the knife, going all the way down, cutting it off. Now I'm gonna start rolling. This is the sushi rice. And down. Some black sesame seeds on here. I'm gonna flip this. Put a couple pieces of salmon in there. Just like that. Cucumber that I cut earlier. Jocelyn's favorite roll is a Philly roll. And that includes salmon and cream cheese. There you go. Now we're just gonna roll it up. I just use my hand first and just uh, boom, roll it like that. I take the makisu that's been wrapped in saran wrap so the rice doesn't stick and I just form it like that. Boom, boom, and I push the side. So it forms a nice edge. I'm gonna just cut this. So I wet my knife before I cut. Bring it together and then we'll cut it into quarters here. If it looks a little deformed after you cut it, you can just 
always put the monkey's back on just lightly. Press it down. We'll make like a cucumber roll. And we're just gonna roll that up. Remember these pieces, put that right on top, just like that. I made this sauce last night, miso, Japanese mustard, and honey. And it's really, real tasty sauce. We're just gonna put a dollop on each piece. Seared salmon roll. Okay, I'm gonna actually make a different shape. I'm gonna show you guys. Ideally, you wanna do this before you cut it, but I just thought of it right now. So, put the roll inside, and I'm just going to reform it differently. Just like that. Just a different way of rolling them here. This is Half Moon Bay Wasabi. There's a wasabi farm here in Half Moon Bay. So that's what we're using today. Uh, it's not sponsored, but you know, if you guys are interested in getting some local wasabi, seeing what they taste like, if you've never had real wasabi before. So this is the belly portion of the salmon. Probably one of the best pieces. Okay, I'm gonna cut some of this for sashimi and some of this for nigiri too. A couple of these will sear too. Brings out the fat when you sear it. I'm gonna take these ones. Salmon rose in the cucumber cup. Cute. About to make an epic salmon platter. One more little dish here. Sesame oil, lemon juice, sea salt. Top with these onions. A little sprinkle of chives too. Bam, bam, guys, check this out. Bam, epic sushi platter right there. And a couple dishes on the side too. We are done with a salmon sushi platter. Wow, wow, wow. This is what you've been looking forward to for, for a very long time. <laughs> oh man, the king salmon that I caught is gonna taste so good right now. I had a little tiny piece, but I haven't had it all together yet. So it, this is, um, I'm really looking forward to this myself as well. Let me just tell you what I have here. I have the Philly roll, which is Jocelyn's favorite. And I also have the seared salmon roll with the miso mustard and I have fresh wasabi and also have some salmon sashimi all on this beautiful platter here. Telakimas, oh wait, beers, beers. Here, I need my beer because I have worked hard on this beautiful piece. 
repping some Oakland Brewery right now, Federation Brewing IPA. Cheers. Cheers. I'm just drinking a squava cider. Cheers, guys. All right. <sighs> oh, that tastes good. What do you want to start with, the roll? Yes. All right, let's start with the roll. A little soy sauce. That is cream cheesy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tasty, though. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is going to be good. Mmm, 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 mmm. The sesame oil, heck yeah, that's good. I should make more of this. Mm. Good, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Let me get some nigiri here. Mmm. Oh, I think I'll try this one. Mhm. Mm wow. The salmon is so soft, tender, buttery, mm -hmm. delicious. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. All that right, good seared salmon's good. You like mm -hmm. that? Some simple sashimi here. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I need some wasabi. Fresh wasabi, you can use a lot. It's not as spicy as uh, the ones you normally get in typical sushi restaurants. Mm. You don't even need teeth to eat that. It just crushes. You can just crush it with your tongue. Wow. All right, seared salmon belly nigiri. <laughs> now I just said so soft, so good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, the belly. The Which salmon the belly? belly. The one you just ate. Oh. <laughs> That's why it's so yeah. soft, so good. <laughs> so buttery, right? <laughs> I can taste the oiliness. In the belly. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like really oily. Yeah, it is. If you've never tried fresh wasabi, try half and bay wasabi. Mm. It's good. It's really solid. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. 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 Good, huh? Mm -hmm. This is amazing. There you go. Mm -hmm. This one's my favorite. That one's the your one. favorite? Mm -hmm. That is good. Yeah, that is really good. You're right. You don't need teeth. <laughs> it right? just breaks apart yeah. with your tongue. You don't need teeth at all. <laughs> I let you down last year. <laughs> I did. I couldn't catch them last year. But this year, I was determined. And last year, I was still working full time too. So I didn't get to yeah. go out as often. I'll catch you one this year. Oh. <laughs> All right, and you're gonna make it for me too? Yeah, I'll make you some sushi. <laughs> oh, okay. Comment down below if you want to see Jocelyn make sushi for me. <laughs> Wild king salmon caught just, just right out there. Well, it's down that way a little more, but there will be more. I can guarantee you that there will be more. I will catch more. All right, guys, last bite for now. Well, take a look at this. All finished. Practically. Forgot about the beer. Mm. Wouldn't have been able to do this without you guys. So, thank you guys for always watching. Thank you for the support. And I really appreciate each and every single one of you. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace. Are you satisfied with your salmon? Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Man, one salmon gives so much. Oh yeah, that's a big salmon too. Mm -hmm.